In this next section of the lecture on lateral torsional buckling, I'm going to go through the design steps of how to get the design buckling resistance moment. Rather than use a top-down approach, I've decided to arrange the steps in the order you are most likely to carry them out by hand. So this is the table of 10 steps, and hopefully by breaking it up in smaller sections, you'll be able to follow the process quite easily. Step 1 is telling us to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram, and that as a result of this step, we will obtain the value of the design moment and the design shear force. So this step is not exclusive to lateral torsion buckling, and it will have already been carried out when checking the beam against bending and shear, both of which are covered in the restrained beams lecture. And this is just a screenshot from the XS Steel website, and it shows clearly the maximum moment MAD and the maximum shear force VED, so that's just an example there. Well, step one. Step two is asking us to classify the section, and as a result, we will get the appropriate values of WY and FY. And I've already gone through the cross section classification in the cross section classification lecture, so hopefully you'll be familiar with that. And to refresh your memory, there is a summary table on the next slide. So let me run through the steps for cross sectional classification. Step one to, is to obtain the value of FY, and the UK National Annex recommends that you get that from the product standards. And the value of FY will depend on the steel grade and the thickness. The next step is to get the value of epsilon, and you can work at epsilon once you have FY. So you can use the equation, or you can simply get the value of epsilon from the bottom of table 5.2 in the euro codes. Just like in BS5950, step 3 tells us to substitute epsilon into the limits given in table 5.2 to determine the classes of the individual elements that make up a section. Step 4 tells us to take the least favorable class worked out and use that as the overall section class. The value of WY that we need to use will depend on the class. So we can see that for class 1 and 2, we will use WPLY, classic section modulus. For class 3 sections, we use WELY, so that's the elastic section modulus. And for class 4 sections, we will use WFMIN, and that's the, effect the effective mo section modulus. So after classifying the section, we will note the value of the yield strength, Fy, and the value of Wy, which we need to use. The next step is to work out LCR, and that's the distance between points of lateral restraint. So this step is very easy. Um, so what I've just said, LCR is the distance between points of lateral restraints. In this screenshot taken from an example from the Access Data website, you should be able to work out quite easily that the value of LCR is 5 metres. So that's step 3 complete, and the next step is to calculate MCR, which could be quite difficult. Direct guidance on how to calculate MCR is not given directly in the Euro codes. Therefore, for this presentation, I will refer to the SN003 document, which is available from the Access Steel website. And this document is classed as an NCCI and that stands for Non-Contradictory Complementary Information. So this is the equation that that document gives you, and it looks quite complicated, but on the next couple of slides I'll break it down for you, and you'll soon see that's not too difficult to use. So here is a list of the terms found in that equation. Um, you see that we have L, which we've calculated previously, we have the Young's Modulus E, and the Shear Modulus, and values of those are given in clause 326 of Euro code 3, under the Design Values of Material Coefficients. Then at the bottom here we have IZ, IT and IW, and on the next slide we can see that you can get these values from the section tables. So you can see from this screenshot from the interactive bluebook that the second moment to vary about the weak axis, which in the euro codes is the Z axis, IZ, the warping constant, IW, and the torsion constant, IT, and they can easily be found in the section tables. So the remaining terms that are in express the expression of MCR are shown here. There is K and KW, which are effective length factors, and we will assume that these values are equal to 1 unless justified otherwise. We then have ZG, which is the distance between the point of load application and the shear centre. So you can imagine, if the load is applied on top land, the distance from the shear centre will be the depth of the beam divided by 2, and if the load is applied through the shear centre, then the distance is 0. And these bottom two terms, C1 and C2, are coefficients, and I'll show you later whereabouts you can get the values for those. So as I said on the previous slide, K and KW will normally be taken as equal to 1. Um, therefore, the equation can be simplified slightly by taking out these terms. So 
But to go into a little more detail about ZG, which is the distance between the point of load application and the shear centre, as I said before, the distance to the top of the top or bottom flange will be the depth of the beam divided by two. If the load is applied to the top of the flange on the simply supported beam, then it is destabilizing, and therefore you can see from the diagram taken from SN003 that the value will be positive. If the load is applied below the shear centre, then it will be stabilizing, and therefore the value will be negative. If the load is applied at the shear centre, the load is neither stabilising or destabilising, and its value then should be taken as zero. Now, we're going to talk about C1 and C2, so the coefficients, and they're used to take into account the shape of the bending moment diagram. And this slide shows an extract from SN003. It shows table 3.2, which tells us the C1 and C2 factors for different types of loading and support conditions, and you use this table when you have transverse loading. For a case where you only have end moment loading, then you should refer to this table 3.1 and the figure 3.1 from SN003 document to get the value for C1. And there's another way that the expression for MCR can be simplified further, and that's when the point, the point of application load is through the shear centre. In that case, ZG is equal to zero because the load is neither stabilising nor destabilising. And because Z G is zero, we can move these C two Z G terms from the equation. Therefore, unless we have a destabilizing load, we can conservatively use this expression and assume that assume that the Z G is equal to zero. So now we know what all of the terms mean and how to get their values. It's a matter of substituting in the values into this expression. It can it can be quite easy to make a mistake with the units, so make sure that all of the units units are consistent. This is probably the most difficult step in working out the lateral torsional buckling resistance of a beam. So that's step 4 completed, and now you can go on to work out the value of lambda bar LT. Lambda bar LT is the non dimensional slenderness, and this is given by this expression 656 in clause 6322 in your code 3. This expression tells us that uh, lambda bar LT is equal to the square root of the modulus about the major axis WY times the yield strength Fy divided by the critical moment. The modulus Wy multiplied by the yield strength is the cross-section resistance and M crit is the critical moment that we just covered. So it's just a matter of substituting in those values to get lambda bar, L lambda bar LT. Next step is to get alpha LT and it's important to note that at this point you'll have to decide whether or not to use the general case or the special case for rule sections. As I mentioned in the introduction, the general case can be used for all sections, but if you have a rule section, it is often better to use the special case since it provides significantly, significantly uh, more resistance. So here we have the two cases, um, and the methods for getting alpha LT are exactly the same, only we use different tables to determine the buckling curve that we need to use. And I should point out that in the UK National Annex, it tells us to use the general case method for equivalent welded sections. Therefore, in the UK, the special case only applies to welded sections. So that's why the equivalent welded sections is spot out. So for the general case, we have this uh, table 6.4, which defines the limit for the choice of buckling curve. We work out the height over breadth ratio, and we determine the required buckling curve. Um, then you use the buckling curve to determine alpha LT from table 6.3, which will be shown in a couple of slides. Normally in the Euro codes, we would refer to table 6.5, but there is a note which says that the UK National Annex changes the values of table 6.5, so instead we should refer to this table in the National Annex under NA 217 clause 6323 part 1. So this is the table from the National Annex that you will need to use for your special case, so for road sections, and you use it in the same way as a table for the general case. So you determine the buckling curve and then you will go to table 6.3 to get the required value of alpha LT. So now that we have determined the buckling curve using either the general or special case, we can refer to this table as so table 6.3, and it's similar to table 6.1 which is used to get the imperfection factor alpha for the column buckling resistance check, and it's used, used in the same way. So for example, if we have a buckling curve C, our imperfection factor alpha LT will be 0.49, and 
and if we have buckling curve D, our imperfection factor alpha LT will be 0.76. So that's alpha LT, and the next step then is to calculate um, calculate phi LT. So if you use the general case to work out alpha LT, then you will need to continue using it. And if you use the special case for the road section, then you must continue using that case too, because just as the tables for selecting the buckling curves are different, the methods used to work out phi LT are slightly different too. Um, so this is expression 656, which is used to calculate phi LT for the general case. You have alpha LT and round bar LT, which we have calculated in steps 5 and 6, so it's simply a matter of substituting in the values. And this is expression 657, which is used to calculate phi LT for rolled sections. This expression is similar to expression 656 used for the general case, except that there are two additional terms, lambda bar LT naught and beta. The UK National Annex indicates that for rolled sections, lambda bar LT naught should be taken as 0.4 and that beta should be taken as 0.75. So again, it's just a matter of substituting in the values to work out phi LT. In the next step is to calculate chi LT for the general case or chi LT for the special case. So again, just to point out that you need to stick to the case that you have been using since determining alpha LT as the equations to work out chi LT, chi LT mod differ. So this is an uh, expression for chi LT using the general case and we refer to expression 656. We have phi LT, lambda bar LT, both of which have already been worked out. So again, we just need to substitute in the values. You'll notice that this condition to the right that chi LT must be less than or equal to 1. And the reason for that is because chi LT is a reduction factor, therefore it should be less than 1. And this is the equation to calculate chi LT for special case, and we refer to expression 657 in your code 3. The same as the equation for the general case, but there is an additional term, beta. And in the UK National Annex, it states that beta should be set to 0.75. So that's the same beta as you used to calculate phi LT for the special case. Now you may have noticed that in the design steps I mentioned that we work out um, chi LT mod for the special case. And this modified reduction factor is given by expression 658. And it is chi LT for the special case divided by a factor f. And since f is always 1 or less than 1, that means chi LT mod will always be equal or greater equal to or greater than chi LT. Therefore, it's beneficial to use this expression as you can gain some actual resistance. And the expression for F is given on the next slide. So, this is expression for F given in the Eurocodes, and you can see that we need to know the values of the terms alpha LT and KC. Now, alpha, sorry, lambda bar. We need to know the values of lambda bar LT and KC. Now, lambda bar LT we've already calculated, so all we need to determine is KC, and KC is a factor which depends on the shape of the Benny Mohm diagram. Table 6.6 .6 gives the values of KC for a range of moment distributions. If we have a variant moment diagram, then we need to determine um, um we need to determine um say. And psi is the moment at one end divided by the moment at the other end. On a side note, the larger the value of the coefficient C1 that you have, then the more helpful F will become in giving you some additional resistance. So now we've calculated chi LT or chi LT mod, we can go on to calculate the design buckling resistance of the member. Expression 655, which you might remember from the introduction. Um, that MBRD is the design buckling resistance, so we have chi LT or chi LT mod, we have WI and FY from the section classification, and we have a partial factor gamma M1, which is equal to 1. So again, just substitute in the values, and you will get the design buckling resistance. Um, so now that we've calculated the design buckling resistance, we can compare that value to the design moment calculated in step 1, and ensure that the member is sufficient to resist, res uh, to resist buckling. So this is expression 654 and it must be satisfied. So the design moment must be less than the design buckling resistance. If this expression is not satisfied, then you need to change your section or increase the number of lateral rooms shown. So now we have completed all of the steps required to check that a member has sufficient 
fucking resistance. You will also need to carry out bending, shear, and deflection checks covered in their strain beam structure before the beam can be adopted. Okay. 